Welcome back to our last video in this riveting series of firewall configuration. We've got one last hurdle we want to cover. The last hurdle we want to cover is Mike IT is, is pretty lazy. And so the problem that Mike IT has right now is that when he attempts to or needs to work on the Windows server that he admins, he has to stand up from his desk, walk out to the data center, hook up a cart. Once the cart's hooked up, he can authenticate with his uh, credentials. The credentials that he has to authenticate to the Windows server should be different than the credentials that he authenticates to his machine. Um, these would be more elevated privileges, uh, uh, more complex username, more complex password to ensure security. And so that it's a mental trigger for Mike that when he is logging in with you know, his admin account, um, that it reminds him that he's doing something on a very powerful machine. So what we want to do is Mike wants to set up the server so that he doesn't have to walk out there every time. And there's this service or application on a Windows box called RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol. And what that allows you to do is from one machine, remotely connect and control another machine. And so what Mike's decided to do is he goes out to the Windows server and he enables RDP. Now, when RDP is enabled, the Windows operating system by default will say what users have access. And so it wants to know what very specific users can have access. And here we're going to say that it's the IT mic. Now notice that's different than mic IT. Mic IT is how he logs into his laptop. IT mic or admin mic or however you want to configure that is how they log into the server. Okay, but that has only now only works um, for that user, but the firewall is still in place, is still blocking. So we need to make a firewall rule on a Windows server that says allow incoming TCP traffic on port 3389 from 55.6.6. Anything. What this rule says is incoming traffic on TCP 3389. TCP 3389 is the protocol and port number that RDP uses. And by saying from 55.6.6. Anything, it allows the IT team to authenticate. Now, one potential concern with that is every IT person, because our DHCP server is configured at 55.6.6, assigns an IP address to the IT team. So that means technically any IT person could launch RDP on their machine get through the firewall, and then be presented with an authentication site. If you want to leave that, that's fine. If you want to be more secure, which I kind of like to do, I think what I would do is I would go back to my DHCP server, and I would say anytime MAC address 99887766 connects, we know that's Mike, and we want to give Mike 6.2. So it's a reserved IP address. And so every time that, that machine authenticates, Mike gets uh, 55.6.6.2. That allows us to take the firewall rule on our server and be a little more specific. Since Mike's the only Windows IT admin that can authenticate to that box, we set the firewall rule to say only allow incoming TCP traffic on port 3389 from that IP address, which is tied to Mike via the DHCP server. And then from there, Mike launches RDP on his laptop. It connects to the Windows server, and he can control the Windows server from his office instead of having to stand up and walk there. And that's incredibly efficient and, and incredibly popular. Now, the problem with that is uh, Mike's still lazy, and Mike wants to be as efficient as possible, and Mike likes to go home. So Mike goes home, and we have a problem with the Windows server, so Mike has to drive his happy butt all the way into the office, log into the laptop sitting in his office, once he's in, he can RDP to the server. Again, being an IT nerd, Mike knows that if he can RDP from one Windows box to another Windows box, he can repeat that step and RDP from his home machine to his office machine. But being security conscious, Mike wants to do this the best he can. So Mike goes out and he signs a contract and they get a contract with a VPN hosted solution called cloud.vpn.com. Okay, and so they are listening, it's a website, they listen on port 443. Whenever you open a web browser and go to cloud.vpn.com, it presents you with credentials to authenticate. 
So Mike signs a contract and he authenticates, he gets a username and password. Now, the username and password that Mike has to authenticate to cloud.vpn.com is different than the username and password that he authenticates to his home machine. It's different than the username and password that he authenticates to his office machine, which is different than the username and password that he authenticates to the Windows server. So multiple layers of usernames and passwords here uh, to help protect us. So Mike authenticates with his contract. He assigned that every time he authenticates, he gets the IP address of 23.11.11.2. So Mike sitting at home at Panera, at a conference clear across the country, wherever, he launches a web browser, connects to cloud.vpn.com, which is over port 443. They've configured their firewall to allow any connection from anywhere in the world. Mike gets IP address 23.11.11.2. So now, wherever he is, that home machine has a very specific IP address. He wants to then be able to remote desktop from his home machine into his office. So when he's in his office, he enables RDP. Again, RDP asks who can authenticate. He's going to say authentication is Mike. IT. Mike IT is the same username that he logs in when he's sitting at the machine or whether he's RDP. So right now the only user account that can connect with RDP is the Mike IT account, which is the same username and password that he authenticates when he's sitting physically at the box. So he's got it configured in his office. Now he needs to be able to do the communication. The problem is he has IP address 23.11.11.2. When he tries to connect to 55.6.6.2, it's gonna, the packets are going to traverse the internet, the network. It's going to get to the border. He's going to look at the border firewall, and the border firewall is going to say, I have no rule for this, so it's going to kill that connection. So we need to make a rule at the border that says allow incoming TCP traffic on port 3389 to 55.6.6.2 .6 from... 23.11.11.2. And so be, by being very specific, if Mike doesn't have that IP address of 23.11.11.2, i.e. he's sitting at Panera and he hasn't authenticated to the VPN and got his correct IP address, that RDP traffic is going to be killed at the firewall. So we're only allowing one service through. So once he has that, Configured, it allows it through the border, it gets over to this machine. The problem is every desktop, every laptop, every end user device also has a firewall. So we need to configure the firewall on his end user machine. And so we have this say allow TCP traffic on port 3389 from 23.11.11.2. So now when Mike is at home, or anywhere on his home machine, as long as he goes to cloud.vpn.com and authenticates, the authentication process will give him IP address 23.11.11.2. Once he has 23.11.11.2, he can launch the RDP application, type in IP address of 55.6.6.2. That packet will traverse the internet, the network, and it'll come to the border of our organization. At the border of our organization, it'll look at the firewall. The firewall says allow incoming TCP traffic on 3389, which is RDP traffic, to IP address of 55.6.6.2 from 23.11.11.2. So it will allow that traffic through. That traffic will traverse the internal network through our routers and switches and find Mike's laptop. Again, because we've configured Mike's laptop every time it's on to always get 55.6.6.2, the traffic comes here. The firewall looks at it and says allow incoming TCP traffic on 3389, which is incoming RDP traffic from 23.11.11.2. It goes through that firewall, gets to the Windows machine with the RDP. He authenticates with his laptop credentials. From there, he can then launch RDP again and RDP into the server because the server firewall is configured. All he has to do is authenticate with the correct credentials. So you can see how Different firewall rules at the border, at the desktop, or at the server and at the desktop will be differently configured to allow different scenarios.